Do you like what I'm wearing? This beautiful, badass, durable clothing? Well, fun fact, you can go on to tomsreefurb.shop and you can buy all that you want. You could spend millions. And give me your credit card information. I promise I won't sell it to um, hackers this time. <laughs> oh, mishap last time. Anyways, thanks for watching my commercial. Hey guys, it's Tom Greenberg here. This is Masu Tangu, and it is almost done. In this video, mark my words, it will be finished. The fastback conversion, all of the issues fixed, it will be better and cooler than ever. So let's not waste any time here. All right, let's get to work. First course of action, let's make a windshield. I could probably fit a glass one in here, but they weigh like 40 pounds, and this is a race car. We need it to be lightweight and fast. This windshield also is not gonna have roll bars coming through it, and it's not gonna be split into three pieces. Hopefully we'll be able to make it out of one. And come over here, look what I want. Went to the Home Depot, got me some Lexan, and then I put it in my S10, and I drove very fast, and I looked behind me and I watched it flap in the wind. So, if all goes right, this won't be super scratched up. But it might be, regardless, it'll fit the car. We're gonna make a windshield out of that. I think we have enough for three attempts. Hopefully one of those attempts is successful. We're gonna model this with cardboard aided design. Oh, it's a nice big piece that I accidentally cut right there. I'm gonna tape this up and I'm gonna cut this off and then we're gonna stick it on, roughly trace it and try to make a template. I'm gonna try to trace this from the inside. This is the only big piece of cardboard I have so I can't mess this up. Give me that camera right now. Yeah, you're in daddy's hands now, how's it feel? You scared? Good. I, I tore apart the dashboard in here because the oil pressure gauge didn't work right. Uh, I haven't fixed that yet. All right, one attempt at tracing. I know it looks good. Cameraman's trying to tease me and I know I did a good job. I should also measure this. If I just measured what I needed, don't listen to me. All right, I'm gonna cut this out. I'm cutting like in a good inch around my drawings because I would like room to mount it. And also I need a lot of room for error because this is straight up guesstimation. Calculated guesstimation. And that is probably not enough. Kind of windshieldy. Maybe I'll just use this and I'll cut little eye holes on the driver's side. Then I can put my face up against the windshield, and try to drive against my chest. I have a feeling that'll fit. You know? I don't know, but I, I think it could. It's fine, Tom. It's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And all right. You're looking even better and even closer. Hopefully, Lexan can. Bend? I'm pretty sure it can. I know it's not really breakable, so it won't be like that acrylic junk we were using on the gauge cluster. I'm gonna move over here. Hopefully that works. Right, I'm gonna try to straighten this out. Go outside my line a little bit. I don't wanna have too much confidence in my eyeballage. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Ooh! Not yet. <laughs> Close. But no cigar. Honestly, I think this is a pretty good baseline. I'm gonna add extra to the bottom. Because it is not straight. Like my cameraman. And then, uh, we'll go from there. Dude, why the would you say that? Because it's, eventually we're gonna have to tell him. Alright, boy, I wasn't ready yet. Wait, that's my decision. Well, I'm ready. Alright, and it's our decision. If you're ready, I'm ready. If you dude. really want to start a family, dude, we gotta be serious about this. Hey, you're right. I know we talked about it, but like, I just, I thought we would have more time to think I mean, about it. We have the adoption center meeting on, like, Monday, so I mean, we really gotta talk about this. We gotta let him know. Right. And that's close enough. This should be an okay baseline. Is this? I'm really hoping it's the same width as this. And it's not great. Great! Maybe I only have two attempts. Oh, I really wanted that to go like, but it didn't. I wanna have two attempts because I don't feel like going to Home Depot. Oh, yeah. I can definitely get two out of this. We have two attempts before I fuck it up. I don't know, dude. It's looking pretty legit. And done. That honestly looks like a fairly symmetrical windshield. 
I can't wait to smell the fumes. Whatever Lexan's made out of, I bet when it burns while you're cutting it, it's gonna smell so good. God, I love you. up off weird chemicals, dude. It's my favorite. So the internet says I can just basically score this like with a razor blade and then just snap it. I'm trying to cut my leg open. Does it snap? Damn, they said it's indestructible. They weren't lying. Obviously, the and razor blade and snap method doesn't work, but that is like the perfect bendability for this windshield. It should work great. All right, the second method I saw that looked easy was tin snips. So I'm just gonna see how hard this is. It's definitely a bit of a forearm workout. I don't like to spend this. That method is too much work. Method hurt my hand. I almost forgot about the trusty metal chop saw that I actually used on the first windshield. I made the first crappy plastic windshield that was horribly scratched up and ugly with this saw. So, it's gotta come back now. I honestly don't think I've used this since I originally built the car. That is the method that we were gonna use. That was really effortless. This is just probably scratching the f out of this. Better not scratch though, it's Lexan. It's actually really expensive. <sighs> Woo, baby! We're getting somewhere. Now this curve, I don't know if this big saw is gonna be able to do it. So I'll probably just go straight across and run along the main curve, and then do the edges with the uh, Couple new battle scars. See, if you had a nice shiny painted car, you wouldn't be able to do this. And this is close. The grand reveal. Does this fit even close at all? I'm gonna go with no. I'm gonna go with we gotta trim a lot. The top and the sides are almost Viable. They're almost presentable. But the bottom, I need to, I need to trim like eight, 800 inches off. All right, plexiglass. Make some progress. Dude, why is there a mark at three and a quarter inches? Oh, you Why'd you do that? Perfectly and beautifully massaged. Ooh. Booyah, baby. Let's see how this fits. Last round of trimming. Let's go. One side. Boom. In case you forgot, this is a rat rod. So I don't want to hear, uh, read a single stupid comment like that was you, it is so crappy. This thing is a mix between a rat rod and a race car. It is not your concourse pristine show winner. So now in preparation for actually installing this windshield, I'm gonna go over all of our welds around the windshield area, especially these spot welds that hold the dash in. And I'm just gonna knock them down with a grinder because I don't want these little tiny pressure points all along this. It's gonna create wind gaps and it's gonna be harder to install it. So sand these down, also clean up the roof weld a little bit and clean up down here a little bit. And then we'll get this thing on. Too bad I'm gonna spray metal and dust all over my interior, but it won't be the first time. We really should have done this before I completely finished the interior, but that's what vacuums are for. Now before we glue and screw this on, I'm going to use the wire wheel and tape 
all the surfaces that it's going to mount to because we're going to use some sealant and I want it to stick. Uh, so we're going to sand it and then clean. I'm wiping this down just with some thinner. Get all the dirt off. This yucky right now is gross and icky and sticky and gross. And also yucky. You know the vibes. <laughs> now we are ready to install. We peeled off the back end of this. I took a razor blade and just cleaned up the inside edge so it's nice and smooth. Now we're using Hardware Store's finest Flex Shot as seen on TV. Uh, this stuff is really nice to use because it's like a can of spray cheese and it just comes out really easily. Um, it's just a basic clear sealant. It's nothing crazy. I don't really want it to be a big adhesive to hold this on forever. So with this stuff, if I ever want to take the windshield off, I can just cut it with a razor blade under the screws that we are going to put in and we'll be fine. So I'm just going to apply this right here. I'll start up here, you know? And it's super satisfying because it's literally just like spray cheese. Nice and clear. Got that. All of you windshield installers in the comments now, don't want to hear a word. I'm using friends to help align this. We'll see if it works. We have like one chance to make it right. Oh yeah, that looks so much better than it did before. This is unnecessarily stressful for some reason. See, there's definitely a little gap right there, but that's just because I'm stupid. Right, I'm just getting the glue residue off with some thinner now. Get it nice and cleaned up. subscribe to see more of that. Now to just seal off the weather, I'm going to go around the very hairy edge. Get it nice and slick. Ooh, look at that. Last swipe, we're almost there. Windshield, almost done. Well, the first course of action to get this car back on the road are of course, the fastback louvers. As you can see, there's just gaping holes right here, and I need to fill them. Now to be completely honest, I'm not exactly sure how these go in the right way. I'm pretty sure they're bolted from the backside to these studs, and then I think most of these studs are just broken. So what I did was got some stuff from the hardware store. We have nuts to go on the studs that are existing, and then if I need to pull it in in the center, I'll take the stud out. And we got some screws as well that will thread in place with these studs and we can figure it out as we go. I don't know, I'm just gonna screw them in until they're tight. So as you can see with the louver here, the front two studs are long enough to grab from the back side, the inside of the car, with nuts. And also there is one stud on the back of it that is long enough and there's one stud in the middle of it that is long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two studs, one in the middle, one on the back side, that are not quite long enough to grab with nuts from the inside of the car. I'm gonna remove these and then replace them with screws that I can then install from the inside of the car. Does that make sense? I don't know, I don't care. You'll figure it out. I'm just gonna cut the heads off these screws and then use them as pretty much all thread and mimic what the other ones are doing. One. Okay. That did not work that time. Now I am screwing in our brand new elongated studs. Done. As you can see now, we have six mountable studs. <laughs> we slide it in with its new perfect screws. Now I'm gonna use a little impact, start in the center, work my way out, crank them down. Uh, 
It's so cool to see it just get flush with the body. Might I say, this is one of the coolest parts of this entire car now. The fact that these are like factory pieces, even though one of them's broken, I don't care. They're awesome. I will now repair this side. I'm actually getting smarter on this side. Uh, I'm taking the screws that I'm replacing the studs with, and I'm just gonna screw them in with the screwdriver first, and then I'm just gonna cut them off while they're attached to the side scoop. One. Two. And three. First we'll tighten down these chrome inserts, because they are separate from the actual scoop. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we install this side. It is two pieces, so we will pretend that it's one. I don't get to play with parts that are worth actual money. And those are. <laughs> Can't even tell they're broken. The next thing going on is the rear fastback glass. Now, obviously, I did not go buy a new fastback glass. Fastback glass, fastback glass. Now, my good friends at CJ Pony Parts were nice enough to send me over a brand new piece with all of the necessary weather stripping. So I'm gonna put it in. Let's see if I can break this. I actually did figure out how to mount this, and it has to do with a one-piece seal. Now, before I go crazy with the full install, I'm gonna make sure this fits on my botched, ratchet-strapped, and tack-welded roof. Right? Looks about right. It looks like it fits. Wow. Wow, actual glass? Wow! All right, now I have to install it, which is not gonna be fun at all. Now, I did figure out how to install this properly, and it has to do with this seal that CJ sent me. Um, I've never installed one of these before, and I'm probably not gonna do it 100% correct, but I heard you pretty much just put this gap on the windshield and then set the windshield in place and use some string to pull this gap through inside the roof. Does that make sense? Definitely didn't drop it off camera. I tried putting the seal on while it was on the car, and I almost broke it. I don't know how to do this. I figured it out, I think. He said to put the short side of the seal on the top of the glass. And so I'm just gonna put it on. It's gonna work. And I'm not gonna regret it. You'd think I smoke meth with hand moves like this. These are crackhead finger activities here. Ask your mom, she'll tell you what I'm talking about. I did have it the wrong way. I was doing it wrong. I don't restore cars, I refurbish cars. Oh, we're making progress now. I think I deserve a break, I think I deserve a treat. I think I deserve a silly little snack after this kind of progress, but nevertheless, I persist. I'm definitely doing it properly now. It's actually going on a lot easier than it did when I was doing it upside down. Getting the hang of this, it's coming together. See me at your next local sweatshop. Putting in with that work. That Mustang sweatshop. Forming right here, right now. Alright, this is gonna be. Okay. I'm finding that this last corner is the hardest. I think I got it! I think I got it! Window seal is installed, window is all cleaned off of adhesive. Now we're gonna go for this string thing. Uh, I've not done this before, like I said, so. It should be fairly simple. Pretty much this little lip right here goes on the edge that it kind of like mounts to. So what we're gonna do is take some tiny string and push it all in here along the whole thing. And then we'll set this rear window in place and then climb inside the car and use the string and some other tools to pull this lip over where the window mounts, if that makes sense. Uh, you'll get it when I start doing it. So I'm gonna start and end in the middle bottom because I think that'll be the easiest. All right, we're gonna start in the middle bottom. I'm going to try to keep this string in here. Roll up the trim and kind of shove the string in. Do not mess it up! Now I got it down pat, baby. 
This is the system. Last pass. Wow, Tom. Good job. Thank you. I really appreciate that, guys. Last lap, last turn. Oh, shit. Oh, God, he's going. Okay, there we go. There we go. Boom, baby. Now we put it in, and I find out I did it all completely backwards, and I throw it across the room and let it shatter into a million pieces out of pure anger. You are now in the tripod as cameraman and I attempt to install this. I'm going to be on the inside, he's going to be on the outside, and I'm just going to try to pull that string through and install this seal for good. If I could stop breaking the string, progress would be much sweeter. Oh no, Rupi, no! All right, now I'm kind of aiding the string with a spatula. It seems to be helping. So I like to go like four inches and then push the seal down. And that seems to get it tight. I saw people online saying this took them three minutes. <laughs> Liars. I bet your grandpa could be like, Yeah, I saw one of those window seals in 30 seconds, man. I pulled that string with my teeth. Taking a little brain break. I feel like I just uh, took the SATs for the seventh time. And I finally spelled my name right. <laughs> the putty knife is where it's at. Work with it, put my legs into it, man. Put some sweat into it. Yeah! This is gonna suck. Push it real good. I'm fighting this corner right here. You can see that's what I've got. This is what I have so far installed properly. And then we have this sharp right angle corner and I'm just using the string and the putty knife to get it through. All right, camera, get back here, man. Sorry. God, dude. You think every spare second is a cigarette break. God. You told me those make me live longer. I'm unstoppable with a screwdriver in my hand. That's what the court said. You're embarrassing me. Oh, come on. Oh. I did it. This is basically light work at this point, man. Oh, why is the string pulling so easily? That's not good. That's not good. Oh, yeah, the string's gone. Honestly, this is kind of satisfying to do. Believe it or not, this is an ad and a forearm workout at the same time. Don't be shy. Come on. Come on now. Oh, come on. Oh! Corner's in. Oh, oh, dude. I farted in here. It smells so bad. In all realness, so though, thank you, CJ Pony Parts because this is going together quite nicely. All things considered, me being borderline incompetent and all. That looks good. Now that the glass is all in, let's move on to the ass end, starting with the trunk lid, and the quarter extensions. Then we're gonna fabricate some cool This came off of that big load of parts that I got before I ever started this project. And it's a brand new deck lid. The one on it was so rusted through that it wasn't even worth fabricating what I'm gonna fabricate onto this one. So, I'm gonna unbolt it and bolt it onto the car. Actually, no, I'm gonna put on the quarter extensions first. <laughs> Remember this box from like six months ago? I found out that the coupe quarter panel extensions actually fit the fastback as well. But the hardware, so I'm gonna start with this side. Boop! Eyeball, engineer it, calculate it, guesstimate it. Wow, that fits perfectly with my heavily massaged and beat the f up quarter panel. Wow. Hey, you don't need to get that close, buddy. Thanks. Now this one is missing the studs, but I'm just gonna use some bolts. It'll be all right. Ooh. There's really gonna be one bolt right here holding this bad boy together. Ah, ah. 
shorter bolts because the ones I was trying to tighten it with were too long. You gotta be kidding me, man. Let's see, that's fine. Time for the trunk lid. I don't need these fancy new lashes. And now I need to install it. Wherever this is, is pretty close. I don't know. Look at the change in the gapetry right here. <laughs> That's what you get when you fabricate like me. Okay? So don't do what I do. I personally could give less of a that it looks like that. Because I'm going to cover it with something cool anyways. <laughs> but, yeah, that's bad. That's rough. Although I think I'm just going to tighten down the trunk. I think we're pretty good here. Perfect. Stop filming the gaps. I have the feeling now to install some accessories that the car has never had before. Because if you look at it, come here. The ass end is just kind of incomplete. It's always had this awkward gap where the bumper should be and I never filled in these holes, so. I'm gonna install the reverse lights. Don't get me wrong, I'm not wiring them. They're just gonna fill in the holes. Bye-bye. Two screw, bye-bye light bulb. Oh, my reverse lights aren't working, sir. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to rear-end your Toyota Sienna with eight kids in it at 40 miles. I'm so sorry. I guess the wall the bulbs must be out. Trimming up some hardware to install these. Honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna like them or not. It might be really ugly and heinous. And if that's the case, I'll just make some block off plates. But I kinda wanna make the ass end look old school, cause you know, it's a fast back and all. It's gotta be as original as humanly possible. And I am calling that <clears throat> tight. I don't hate that. Never tried this, never thought of this until today. Never have I even considered doing it. But now that it's a fastback and it's a classic and it's a collectible, I guess we'll finish it off. Okay, I have this bumper. Don't freak out, calm down. I mean, honestly, it does kind of tie it all together. I mean, noise complaint pulls off the bumpers. Why? It makes it actually look like a real Mustang on the back. Whereas this is kind of like, you know what I mean? I stole this old rusty bumper off of a secret parts car because I need the mounts for it. Uh, the parts car is so rusty, I literally just saws all around the mounts. Uh, and the bolts are also so rusty, I'm 99% sure the bumper mounts are gonna break. But it's a risk I'm willing to take because I don't feel like waiting three days for bumper mounts. Now this goes in the scrap pile. Unless we do a rusty bumper, I don't know. I will now install the ever so rusty bumper mounts with some leftover hardware from when I rebuilt noise complaint. I love spare parts. Oh, I'm so dumb. I have to put the bumper on the mounts first. All right, I'm gonna keep adjusting and messing with this until it gets straighter than this. I'll see you when I do that off camera so I can say choice words. This, I believe, is gonna be good enough for what it's for. So I'm gonna move on to the next thing. But look at it though. Damn! I'm getting very excited with how this is looking. Uh, it looks kind of like a car. However, we have one more thing to fabricate and that is another ducktail spoiler. You really think I'm gonna leave this thing stock looking in the rear? Uh-uh, we need aero for that front wheel drive. So, I'm gonna use this massive piece of cardboard and model out another ducktail wing, and then I'm gonna make it out of metal and weld it on. This is what I'm going with, pretty much identical to the old spoiler. However, it's about an inch shorter, a little less dramatic. And I'm also gonna change the way that I made those triangular supports so it will look different. Now, if you wanna watch me build this without it being that three second time lapse you just watched, subscribe to my Patreon in the description. Silly goose, <laughs> you're missing out. Anyways, 
Let's make it out of metal now. It's gonna look so cool. Here we have a nice thick 16 gauge piece of sheet metal that's almost cut out to shape. So I'm just gonna trace a cardboard template and make it out of this. I'm pretty much just gonna go for it. Start zapping. I like how this is looking, so I'm just gonna throw some more tacks on it, and then we'll get creative. Now this is where I'm about to get crazy on it. Now for these lines that I have nice and symmetrical with the roof scoops, I've got something in mind that I just want to model out of cardboard and see how it looks. Now these are modeled, I can make them out of metal. I gotta do two on the outside, so two that look like this, and then I'll have to make two shorter ones for the middle. It's gonna look super badass, so we'll start with the outside ones. I'm gonna turn this into metal now. Wow. Oh, we're close. Man, that looks cool. Before I weld, I'm gonna mimic this, and that'll be done. Now. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna weld them quite yet. I started modeling the middle ones, because if you look in here, these middle supports are gonna be shorter than the outer supports. So I made one out of cardboard here. Uh, however, I want it to be the same length as those ones. So I'll do a little bit of math and the calculations. I'll use the metal to get that extra half inch. I'm just gonna draw it and eyeball that extra half inch. In fact, we'll eyeball a little extra half, more, a little more than a half inch. Now it's not going to be perfect, we're not going to be down to the millimeter here. But judging by the fact that the roof is on kind of crooked, and the fenders are angled in properly, and the entire thing is tack welded, <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. Same length. Yeah, baby! Same length, good job, mate. I decided I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna mimic it, and then we're gonna weld them on. And it's gonna look great. What the f could you say differently, asshole? Let's weld them on. Get it? It's like if you if you just picture. <coughs> Ooh, where's my moving blanket? Protect that new glass, baby! It is indeed pretty straight. I'm gonna look at it from the front. Move, cameraman, move! Sorry. Such a skilled <laughs> guesstimator, man. I think using my little trick here with the notch will one, help it flow with the car, and two, make it stronger on that really skinny tip. So I don't need safety glasses to fucking cut paper, I just realized. <laughs>
nice and strong. This is a good prototype, I think. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna tack it on, and I'm gonna cut a slit in the quarter panel. Just because I'm here to party. Now for the dumb part, I will mark this. And I will make cameraman hold the trunk up. I'm just kidding. All right, okay, go me, just say, go me. We like it, so I'm calling it a day. Now I'm kind of welding the area that I cut too much of back shut, and that'll also sort of strengthen that little spot. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a genius, uh, but I'm saying this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, baby. Clever thinking right there, I might say. Oh, that looks so cool, too. I will now repeat that entire process on the other side. It's done now. Look at that. Perfectly complements the body line and best part. Woo! Boom. Boom. Now it is time to secure the trunk to the car. Uh, and I'm not gonna use two hood pins because that was overkill. It was also a lot of work and I don't feel like doing it. So now I'm going to run one hood pin through the factory keyhole and that will hold our trunk down. It's gonna go something like this. Bing, bong, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna go something like that. Watch this. Where's my wheel over at? It doesn't work. <laughs> All right, we just went back and forth and measured the trunk up and down, and I think this should work right here. Yeah, baby. Now we are talking. Trunk ain't moving now. Now this works perfectly. Look at that. Boom! Now the only issue with it is that it looks ugly. So I'm going to take this washer and turn it into something that makes it look a little better. I'm just going to slot this on one side and then we'll tack weld it in. And it should help kind of clean that ugly hole up. Let me tell you, I'm well versed in that. I'm gonna prep that area to weld it on and I'm also going to sand the paint off of this entire edge because it bugs me that it's black and I want it to rust. Is this bad for the paint? I'm gonna eyeball this fitment here. I just want it to be symmetrical, you know? Those sparks are hot. That got hot really fast. Okay, I'm well aware that looks really bad, but it's gonna be passable. And it'll all rust together, so don't worry about it. The exterior of this car is almost completely finished. And I've just been poking around. I've been looking at these little details I can add and these holes in the quarter panel. And I was at a swap meet recently and I found the actual factory trim that goes in the quarters. And I was like, eh, I probably won't put it on. However, we were messing around. You know, we were playing. And we actually think it looks really cool. So I'm gonna put these in. Now, the other side does not have the holes for it, so I have to measure this. Okay, perfect. 
I'll just drill the holes bigger than they need to be. And that'll solve it. That looks so good. You know, I just have to. I can't go just like one side like this. It looks too good. Stop! Zoom in! Problem solved. I'm gonna go ahead and call the exterior done now. But we're not done completely. We have some little things to button up before we can actually drive the car again. Starting over here. If you look here, you can see that there are absolutely no seals around the windows. And yes, I know, I can put the right window seals in. But why would I do that when I have this foam that I bought off Amazon with adhesive on it for like $10 that will perfectly seal the gap? Probably even better than the factory seal would. Look at this stuff though. It is awesome. I used it off camera, of course, to seal off some of the gaps between like the hood and the interior so wind wouldn't come in. And it works really well. So what I'm gonna do is just stick this alongside the inside of both windows and it's gonna seal off the wind and the noise and the weather and it's gonna make this car so nice to drive. Before applying this, I'm gonna wipe down the surface with lacquer thinner, get the dirt off, make it stick. I got no fears about this. I'm just gonna stick this stuff all the way around and hope that it helps our situation. And I'm just gonna start all the way down here. Oh yeah, this stuff is super sticky. Oh. We got a little bit in here that can use some better stickage. That ought to do the trick. You may have noticed during this video that the interior is torn apart again. That's because I miswired or something got messed up in the oil pressure gauge. So it's not working. It just says sense, which I've read the schematic and I've troubleshot it a lot. And it says it's either a short in the wiring or it is the sensor itself. Now I've already replaced the sensor, so it could be a short in the wiring. And I've already tested the wires and they say that they themselves have continuity. So now I'm gonna check continuity between each wire. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna put it back together without a working oil pressure gauge because I'm tired of it. And I'll just like buy another one or I'll just like guess that it has oil pressure. Cause I'm sure it does. It's got plenty of it. There's oil in there. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the three separate little connections that each have their individual wire and I'm checking to see if they have continuity, meaning these two touch with each other. Now if that's the case, that means that somewhere in that loom they have gotten squished and shorted out on each other, which would cause a problem like this. So, first I'm gonna check this one. If I hear a beep, that means it's a problem. No. No. <laughs> now I give up and I put it back together without an oil pressure gauge. Now I have to put it on the lift to fix one final issue. The problem I need to solve is something involving the transmission mount or an engine mount because every time I accelerate or move the car, the shifter moves like four inches. So there's some mount that's loose allowing it to have play. So I have to figure out what that is. We're getting fancy. Start it up. like the trans mount was actually loose, as in like where it's bolted to the chassis. It's either broken or loose as f I'm gonna go out on limb and say that the bolts is loose. And I'm gonna tighten them and I'm gonna hope that that fixes my problem. Oh yeah. That trans mount is very loose. That's tight. You know what time it is? Excuse me. Good. The car is low on coolant, and it's nighttime, and it's cold, and you can't see anything. But I'm taking for a little spin. Oh. I think that transmount might be actually bad, but.
because I never sealed off the holes where the roll bars used to go down in the fenders. So a little bit of air gets in, but I can seal that up. <laughs> it's so crazy to drive this thing with windows. It's not cold in here right now. I can't hear the road behind me. Driving the monster tango right now. Once again, baby! I'm very happy. First official squeeze in. We need to do a maiden voyage. We're going to drive this to the fuel station and see if our fuel fill up actually works. Wow, do you notice how my voice resonates in here? It's like it's a car that's not completely open to nature. Oh baby. Crack my window that seals. Only thing I don't have is an oil pressure gauge, and I'm all right with that. <laughs> yeah, baby! It's only been about six months, my We're back. <laughs> Let's try to break it on the first run. It's all right. Oh, she's rubbing the fenders. I lowered it just a little bit more off camera, so... We're gonna have some rubbish, and that's okay. All right, I'm not too worried about a little rubbish. Open, and every time I hit a bump, you'd be able to like hear 
everything in the body just like come apart and slam back together. Like it sounded like the body would like come off the chassis and land back on it every time I hit a bump. In here, now, it feels bone stock. Came from the factory like this. I honestly feel like I've been in Mustangs with worse wind noise than this one has right now, which is awesome. As you can see, I did not successfully fix the transmission mount. It still wiggles a lot. Need some like billet mounts or something. But hey, we made it to the only fuel station that sells E85 in the tri-state area. So that's a good sign. We got a reliable, dailyable vehicle now. As long as I can find other places that sell E85. Hey Tom. What? It's on the other side. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Wow, damn, it's, I didn't, it's like I didn't even build this thing. Let's see if the fuel fill up works. I have a feeling it's gonna cause me to have to like manually feed it, but we'll see. No, <laughs> it doesn't work. I didn't design it that well, but I'm gonna slow fill. Now. It's, it's, it's going to be a timely process to fill this car up, but that is 100% due to the fact that I did not do a very good job designing the fill-up system. That's okay. We're at 1.7 gallons. This won't take long. It's fine. It's okay. And full. is not quite developed to smell yet like most old cars they smell like old leather and like mildew and it kind of smells cool because it's old but because this car is all fresh and brand new everything it kind of smells like a staples or like the craft section of a walmart oh i gotta get ready to come but maybe i'll uh, i'll fart it out in enough it'll smell like my car It is crunchy. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. their gear is rough. We're driving Monster Tanya right now as a fastback. It's comfy as hell. It's not overheating. I'm not quite sure what the oil pressure is, but that's okay. There's a crackhead on the bridge. I couldn't ask for a better day. Yes. Yeah.